Good morning, guys. Um, I am going to go ahead and get started with uh, today. <laughs> um, hi, if you're there and I am not sideways, please do let me know. Um, I'm trying to do this in a landscape format for today's yoga session so that you guys can see all the movements and uh, some of the modifications that I'm going to have to make. If it looks good to you, please do give me a thumbs up. Vicki, welcome. Uh, Kendall, welcome. If you can see me, definitely give me a thumbs up. Everything's okay to go. Um, I chose to do the Ashtanga Primary Series to share with you guys today because um, it's a practice that I fell in love with after doing hot yoga. I kind of stumbled upon it. The, um, studio near my house was uh, offers it and I wanted to check it out and what I loved about it is that it is a very um, it's a very disciplined practice it's a little bit different than Hatha or your typical vinyasa flow or things that you would catch at you know core power or some of the other chains um, it's a series that's been around for a really long time and the great thing about it is that much like a uh, Bikram it has a set amount of postures that you do. Uh, for the entire series, I think there's like eight legs or uh, levels. I might be totally wrong on that too because I'm very rusty on it. Um, but basically to do all of the postures for the entire series uh, takes several hours. And today we're just gonna touch on some of the basic movements, um, things that I find very helpful um, in terms of opening up my body and then also for um, kind of resetting and aligning our, our body. Um, a lot of people think that yoga is just about, you know, relaxation and breathing heavy and stuff. And really what it's about, um, it's about readjusting your body, whether it's on the physical level, the mental level, the emotional level. Um, it's very meditative. And because you can't, you know what the postures are, you can really focus on having your breath lead you through that inhale. Um, to create uh, that compression against your organs and your spine in certain postures and the exhale to release so that it's constantly, you know, realigning and um, creating space in your body for things, you know, to recover, whether it's, you know, from stress or from other things that you do. You know, I'm an advocate weightlifter. I definitely like to incorporate some type of um, stretching into my programming just because it's essential to create balance in your muscles because weightlifting shortens your muscles and uh, yoga and things of this calisthenics and stuff um, increase the length of your muscles so it just balances you out so that you're not um, so you're balanced right we all want to be balanced and if our body's balanced we have less chance for aches and pains and disease and all of that stuff so I see a third person I'm just gonna pop on really quick and Okay, just make sure. Uh, hopefully you guys can see me. One of the other things that, before I get started I wanted to talk about with Ashtanga, um, because it is structured, all of the postures start at the front of the mat. And uh, basically, anytime you do a particular movement, whether it's sunny or sunbeam, I'm also not gonna be trying to rattle off any of these names because they're long and I'm gonna butcher them and I respect the practice. So I'll just kinda gotta talk you guys through with normal um, common names. Uh, you've heard of them before, Warrior One, Warrior Two, but there are traditional, you know, the, the correct name for it. Um, but basically, when you're going through the movements, every movement, um, there is a chaturanga in between. If for some reason uh, a chaturanga is not something that's accessible to you, you know, a push up uh, is not accessible to you, you can always lower yourself down slowly and then uh, sit in a child's pose and then come up into downward dog. I'll demonstrate that. A couple times getting started, this is my first movement for the day, so I'll definitely be taking some um, different postures in the beginning, not going as deep, until I feel comfortable that, you know, I'm warmed up and um, that I'm stretching. And, you know, same thing in downward dog, kind of out your feet. Don't necessarily need to make sure your heels get down right away because, you know, we're still warming up. So between each posture, you're going to do a chaturanga, typically. Um, when we start out with sun A and sun B, typically it's five times of each one. We're just going to do three, so it's going to be very abbreviated. 
Um, and also for each of the postures, you're to hold them for 10 breaths, which is a full inhale and a full exhale. You want your inhales and your exhales to match. Um, again, with the abbreviated version, we're just going to be holding for five breaths. Um, and I think that's pretty much about it. So I'm going to be referencing a kind of book here that one of my teachers gave me. It's called short form. It says it's 45 minutes. It could very well take longer or less, but um, I hope you guys really enjoy it and we'll get started. So we're gonna get started at the top of our mat. Um, this is what I was scared of. You won't be able to see me when I'm at the top of our mat, but the other stuff you will. So um, we'll get started with a, Our feet are at the top of the mat, a little bit different from uh, other forms of yoga. You're going to want to make sure that your toes are touching and your heels are slightly apart. Um, when you're in the standing position also, it's about making sure that your legs are engaged and we're not just hanging out. All of these postures are about engaging all of our muscles. So as we reach up overhead, you want to make sure that your shoulder blades are down, you're engaging your body, and we're going to come down and get ready for our sun A. As we're bent over, we're going to come up for a straight back to our shins. And then as we prepare for our chaturanga, we're going to come through. And I'm actually going to step back because like I said, this is my first movement of the day. Modified version will be able to lower yourself down gradually. Once you're down on the ground, come back for that child's pose. And then we'll meet up into downward dog for five breaths. Again, you want to pedal out your feet, feel those hamstrings stretching. As we continue through the practice, you'll have plenty of opportunity to do more downward dogs. So if your heels aren't touching just yet, they will by the end of the practice. Five breaths, you can either jump forward or step forward to the front of your mat. Come up for that flat back, inhale. Exhale, and then come on up. We're going to do that two more times. Down to the ground, up for that flat back, take a jump back if you can, lower down, up dog, down dog, four, five breaths. Now when you're in this position, it feels very challenging um, on your shoulders. It's really important to make sure that your quads are engaged and that your gaze is just between your legs, kind of in that thigh gap area, or as if you were looking at your belly button. And what this does is it stretches out your spine, engaging your legs helps distribute the load so you're not dumping everything into your upper body. It makes it very manageable. Then we'll jump up, flat back. Exhale, reset, come up for our last sun A. Come on up, down, flat back, inhale, jump or step back, lower down, upward dog, back to downward dog for five breaths. feet, engaging our abdominal area, pulling our belly button into our spine, for five, jump up, inhale for that flat back, exhale, and come up to the top. So the Suri Namaskara B, which is uh, sun salutation B, is a little bit different than what you might have seen in other studios. We're going to come down, swoop up for a slight chair pose, engage those quads, step down, jump back, come around up, into your downward dog, and then we'll step forward with the right foot, coming up, arms overhead. Brief pause, switch it out, 
chaturanga, upward dog, downward dog, step foot with your left foot, come up for warrior one, three paws, and come down, chaturanga, between movements, and settle into our downward dog, or sun salutation B, five breaths. Step up. Come up for that flat back. Come down before it comes to the top. We'll do a quick chair pose and reset. We'll do that two more times. Down for that chair pose. Arms up overhead. Swoop down. Flat back. Jump back. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Step your right leg forward. Come up for your warrior one. Back down. Chaturanga. Step through with your pose where you're breathing and moving. Not so easy sometimes. Come on down. We'll settle into our second downward dog of sun salutation B. to the front of the mat, stepping, jumping, inhale for that flat back, come down to the ground, quick chair pose, reset. Last round of sun salutation B, we will do our quick chair pose to start, come on down and touch our toes, and again if you can't touch your toes that's totally fine, you need to bend your legs slightly to be able to achieve that. Totally fine. Come up for that flat back. Jump back. Try to run that. Step your right foot forward. Warrior one. Step your left foot forward. Ah, uh, step back. Chaturanga. Stepping your left foot forward. Come up for warrior one. I know you guys can't see my arms. Sorry about that, but my arms, my hands are together. My legs are engaged. There's just as much pressure in the front leg as there is in the back leg so that you are stabilized. Stretching up overhead. Step back. Chaturanga. Left dog. We'll be at our down dog, our final down dog for sun salutation B. Five breaths. Again, hinging your legs so that your weight is distributed and you're not dumping all this into your shoulders. And we'll go ahead and step it forward. Come up for that flat back on an inhale. Brief chair pose and reset. So with our toes being together, our next posture is basically gonna be a forward fold, but it's gonna be an active forward fold where our goal is to pull our chest to our shins. We'll begin that with a little jump out to the side. Go ahead and pull your arms overhead to create the space. Swan dive down, and you'll be grabbing your big toes between uh, with your index and middle finger. 
pulling your body close. Try not to use your thumbs for stability so that you can maintain your balance. Five breaths. And then remember, like I said, each posture is um, we'll do a turn around in between each posture to continue the uh, keeping our heart rate elevated. So it's a little bit of cardio, keeping our body warm so that we can continue to stretch and become more active and get deeper into our poses as the practice goes. So we'll jump back, come down for up dog. We don't hang out in the down dogs between poses. Do a quick step up. And then our next posture is going to be a triangle. So triangle pose you may have seen before. We always start on the, with the right side and the left side. It has to do with digestion and how our body um, processes things. So I will be stepping out to the right to perform the triangle pose. If you cannot touch the ground, Definitely use a yoga block or something or just come up to your shin, but you will come out to the side and tee out your arms and kind of say to hinge out your hips and float down, making sure to keep your hips square and you'll create this T-shape. So you want to make sure that you're pulling your chest open, you can't come all the way down. I know some people, they will try to come down here. And their body collapses. It is much better for your system and beneficial for your system to um, have your body open. So if that means you're not as deep in the bend, that's okay. It's more beneficial to have this, um, your body open and your chest open. You can place block either behind you can put or come down a little bit lower, whichever works for you. That was definitely five. And again, we reset to the front, and we'll do the other side. So we'll step out to the left side, angling our left foot out. We've got that T. We'll hinge forward and come down for the triangle pose. Looking up at your palm, and you want to you'll feel a stretch here on the side. Really good for um, any ITB pain. A lot of people think that if you have tight ITVs, you gotta roll out your actual bands, but it's better to release the tension at the connection points, which are your hips and your knees, and that will give you some relief. So then we'll take it, we'll come up. Anytime you come up from these poses, you wanna make sure to inhale, because that creates compression and tension to brace your core and the lower back as you come up, and then you will come up to the front. Next one is going to be a side angle pose. Um, again, we're going to step out to the right to start our posture, and you will come down. And the point is to extend our arm so that it is just over us. It's not going to be a T like the last one. And if you can, with balance, go ahead and stare. Um, move your gaze to like the middle finger of your left arm. So inhale on our way up, step to the front, reset, exhale on the left side, come on down. And you want to make sure that these legs are engaged to not only create balance, but also create the tension that your body needs to start releasing. And we'll come up. Oh, it's so bright on that side. I can't see anything. So then we'll come and reset for a chaturanga. Flat back. Get the heart rate going again. Just up for one. And step forward. So the next two postures are going to be forward fold, wide-legged forward fold. Two variations. We're going to go ahead and step out to the right again. You can pivot your toes slightly in so that when you bend forward, um, you're in proper alignment. Go ahead and pull your arms. 
arms out to the side. Take an inhale to raise your core. And float down to the ground. Trying to evenly displace your body weight so that if someone were to come on and kind of push on your back, you would be sturdy. Hands are down to the ground. Pulling your chest through, not necessarily your head. And then we'll come up, hands on the waist to remind you to inhale. So brace that back, step to the front. And then we'll do. We will, you know what, I'm going to step out to the left for the next one just so that you guys have a better view. Um, so the next one we're going to step out. This is again a wide legged forward fold. I want you guys to be able to see uh, my hands. It's going to be in a prayer position. So you'll pull your hands behind your back, your palms together. This is a great shoulder opener. You go ahead and inhale and exhale, folding forward, keeping those shoulder blades pinched, keeping those legs engaged as well. So that you have balance and striving to maintain that balance back and forth. So you have even weight displacement on your feet, not just in your heels or your toes. Feeling those hamstrings release. Which another thing, if you guys don't know this, when you do engage your legs, it actually releases your hamstrings. So it behooves you to do that. And that is the name of the game. Releasing everything, whether it's tension in our bodies, stress in our mind, we just want to release. And we'll take an inhale again before we come up, bracing our lower back, and then we will step up to the front, resetting, and we'll do another chaturanga between us. So come on down, forward fold. Take an inhale, shins for a flat back, jump back, chaturanga, let's start downward dog briefly, come on to the front. The next posture, um, hopefully, I think you'll be able to, so the next posture is going to be a one-legged uh, stand. If you cannot do it with your leg fully extended out, does take quite a bit of balance and strength. You can just pull your knee up and hold it for the five breaths. We'll see how I do today. But basically, you'll grab your right foot. We start on the right. With your index finger and your middle finger, go ahead and inhale, and we'll bring that foot forward, keeping it straight for five counts. Everything's engaged, our gaze is forward, we're balanced, we're focused for five. The next posture for this is actually going to bring that leg out to the side. I have extremely tight hips, so my variation will be in the bended leg format, bringing my leg out to the right for that open hip hip opener. If you can't extend your leg, that's awesome. Please do it if it's accessible to you. And then we'll come back to the front. We'll do a quick, uh, this is great for the lower abs. We'll do a quick thing where we do, we bring our foot up into that straight legged position and then we hold it. Super awesome lower ab hip flexor strengthening movement for five pounds. As the time goes on, You'll notice my leg will get lower. Try not to lean back to keep your leg up. And then we'll bring that down. Also works the quads a little bit. On to the left side. Woohoo! Get that balance. Get a hold of that big toe. And fully extend your leg for the five count. five, bring it in, or keep it extended for that side hip opener. Bring 
maintaining that balance. And that's five. We'll quickly see how well I do on this side. Left side is always challenging if you're right side down, so I'll go ahead and set my leg up until it's a stay there. Engage my lower core. Don't lean back. Keeping that leg up. Feeling that pressure there. Your hip flexor, your lower abs. For five. Ah. And come down for that. Next part of the posture is also another hip opener. So you have kind of a figure four. You'll go ahead and take your right leg up and place your foot into the hip crease of your left leg. The full posture would be um, wrapping your arm around and running forward. And what this does is it creates a pressure point that helps with all of your internal organs. A lot of the stuff is about pressure points, but for me, again with the tight hips, I will just maintain the standing posture and pull my right arm around to grab my left elbow so that I can keep my chest open and stretch. So that's five. We'll put our right leg down, left leg up into the right hip crease. This one's a little bit easier for me. Again, full posture. If you want to come down all the way, you can. You want to just stay at the top. It's just as beneficial. So that's three, four, and five. Next group, we're going to go ahead and start it with our chaturanga. That arms overhead. Swoop down, touch the ground. Inhale for a flat back. Jump back. Do your push up, your up dog. Down dog. And we actually did a step through for a warrior two. So basically, your front foot and your back foot are going to create like perpendicular kind of angle, and you want to make sure that you are putting just as much pressure in your feet if you need to widen your stance. If balance is a little bit of an issue, you can't kind of like stagger your feet, but ideally your heel in the middle of your back foot should be right in the center. And you'll come down for a warrior two. Another thing I see people do is they lean for their warriors. No leaning. Keep a nice upright torso. Legs are completely engaged, your hands are engaged, you're shooting out to the wall in front of you, the wall in back of you. You are pulling um, kind of your right hip through so that you can continue to square your hips. Great hip opener. We're actually going to try to rock it through this and do warrior two, come up to do warrior two on the other side. So, currently the arms down. Step your left leg for, for warrior two. And again, you can see me kind of adjusting. Make sure I get a nice wide stance. I'm not leaning. And my legs and my arms and my core, everything is fully engaged. It's an active movement. Four, five, we'll cartwheel down. Chaturanga. And this one we're going to jump through to seated. So, the basically the rest of this is going to be all seated on the ground. So we're at the top of our mat. Legs are extended. This is called Nandasana. Uh, one of the few that I can pronounce. <laughs> and you'll go ahead and engage your legs. And you're going to press your palms into the ground if for some reason your hands seem like they're too short and you can't touch the ground. You can always put a block on either side to give you something to push off of. But the point of this posture is to elongate our spine. 
because we're going to be doing some forward folds and some twists to help, again, uh, promote the flexi flexibility in our spine and also uh, detox our system with the twists. So, Tendasana, legs are engaged, palms are on the ground, bringing your shoulders back, and it looks like you're not really doing anything, but everything is engaged, you're pushing the ground away, you're pushing energy out through the bottom of your feet. Neutral spine, breathing in and out. So for the purpose of time, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, groups of these seated poses together. Um, and uh, it can be a lot of chaturangas for most people. Actually, you know what, I am going to go through chaturanga three because this, it helps to open up your shoulders and you can get into the postures a lot better. Um, so our next posture is going to be, I'm going to really quickly jump back for my chaturanga. our right leg, pulling our left leg in, and squaring those hips, those shoulders, reaching for that right leg. For five breaths. Two. Three. You'll feel it a little bit from your hip up here, there's some connections here that'll start to lengthen for you in these poses. We'll come on up, crisscross our legs, jump back, downward dog, Woo. that heel, that rock heels, fire lip. So the next posture is going to be, we'll bring our right leg up here, and we will reach for our left leg. If for some reason it's kind of wonky for you, what you can do is take a towel. Um, I like to use a towel or something that uh, compresses so that it kind of fills in the gaps, whereas a yoga block is going to not really do it. A little too rigid, but you'll build up that space under your hip. And we'll go ahead and reach for that left leg. So if you can get to the point where you are touching your foot or pulling on it, your heel, your 
right heel ideally should be right back by your butt for the full posture, but depending on flexibility and mobility, we will just work to get up to that point. So that's four, and five. We'll go ahead and chaturanga that out. If you don't want to chaturanga, your shoulders are cached, you don't have to, you can do a quick child's pose, or you could just hang out at the top and we'll meet you there. Jump back. we'll use our left arm for stability, kind of help pull us through the pose, our chest through the pose. Right arm comes up for a nice deep, ooh, did you guys hear that crack? Snap, crackle, and pop! So if you can, use over to your left. And again, a lot of these postures that I'm doing are modified. Um, I haven't practiced Ashtanga three or four days a week for a few years, so this is what's accept accessible to me. It's just as beneficial. Showing up's the hardest part, right guys? So we're here, we're present, sharing each other's energy. Come on through for our chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Jump through to seated. And the next one is going to be our boat pose. So the way this works is it's actually three rounds of boat pose holding it for the five breaths or 10 breaths. Um, so we'll come up into our boat pose. Basically uh, the variation for that is you guys have your knees bent. You can hold this for your five breaths or you could do the full extension for five breaths. So we're going to do the three sets right after each other. We won't chat around in between, but we will take a quick break. So we have our boat pose. One more breath here, guys. I don't know if you can see my toes wiggling back and forth as I stare at what's left of my pedicure from three months ago and <laughs> literally have one toe painted. Go ahead and take a breath uh, in between. 
you will have your legs crossed and kind of push through your palms, kind of similar to one of the poses we did earlier. A nice stretch, put your shoulder blades back. And we're going to come up again for our second boat pose of the three. Woo! See if I can do it. Yes. Five counts. So like I said, you're starting, your gaze is going to be just over your toes. Keeping those shoulders back, that core engaged. Woo! I don't know if I'll be able to do this the third round, guys. Shaky shake. Legs engaged. I'll come into that seated position. So super cool. I can feel everything. My hips, my spine. Little cracks here and there. My body realigning. Give it a push to the ground. Feel that stretch through your neck, your shoulder blades. All right, we got one, one last boat pose, guys. Whew, come on up. Straight legs engaged. Shoulders, chest proud. Two. Three. One. I can do it, right? If I can do it, you can do it. Four. Touch your 
uh, heels. That's how close it should be. Your feet should not be up here for bridge pose. So you don't want to touch your heels there. Feet are about hip width distance apart. And we're going to drive our hip, hips all the way up. And there will be a couple of variations for continuing to stretch those muscles. Um, that compression that we create here in our spine has some other benefits for our thyroids, our thyroid, and we'll get into more of that later as this progresses. So dry those hips straight up. If you can, kind of shimmy your shoulders under, your shoulder blades under, and clasp your hands for the bind. If you can, keeping your hips engaged, you'll feel this in your quads as well. So that's three. Tap your head and slowly lower yourself down. We'll come through and do our chaturanga for a second. Come right here. Back to the way it was. So come through and do our chaturanga. So, like I said in the notes, before, when I posted the class, your things cause and effect, there's an action reaction. So when that wheel pose, the shape of our spine, right? So we're going to go ahead and balance it out with a forward fold, which is the opposite movement of our spine. Whew. So you can go ahead and take that inhale up, exhale as you come down to create that space. This should be quite a bit deeper than it was in the beginning of the practice, just because you're warmed up, you're opened up. Man, that wheel took a lot of time me. It's been a while since I did that. Ideally, we would do three of those. Um, but for time, I figured, if we're just getting started, we don't want to overdo it. We'll just do one of those today. We have a forward fold. We're going to chat around and set up a plow pose. And this is the pose I talked about for having thyroid benefits. It can be a pretty intense posture because um, it has some, so much compression. And if you don't calm your breath um, and you're a little claustrophobic, you can taking it kind of overwhelming. So it's really important for you to breathe in this pose and um, just kind of focus on your breath so that you don't get overwhelmed with it. 
So we've got about a handful of postures after that before we get to Shavasana. So we're almost there, guys. So for cloud pose, you're basically going to lay down, bring your hips over you, and reach your feet behind your head, compressing your neck area. If you have a bind, you can definitely do that, or just place your hands on the ground. And from this, we'll just slowly roll out of it, one vertebrae at a time. Letting our legs down. Whew, I got a nice little spine crack there. And then the opposite pose from that is going to be called, this, it's called a fish pose. Um, and it's basically to take our spine from the opposite um, position that it was in in plow pose to balance it out. You can do it with your legs crossed or you can do it with your legs out. But basically you're going to put the top of your head off the mat. As you arch back, your legs are folded, no problem. That crack will pop. Great chest opener. And we'll come out of it. Slowly bring your head down. Next posture, we're going to do a chaturanga, and then these are going to be our closing postures before we get into Shavasana. So do one last chaturanga. Make it a good one. Jump through to seated. We'll go ahead and sit here with a cross-legged pose. Bringing our hands to prayer position behind our back much like we did earlier. This increases the flexibility in our wrists, helps with carpal tunnel, um, blood flow to those areas, broadens our chest, and we'll go ahead and fold forward with our chest to the ground. As far as you can. Four, five, the kind of fifth, we're going to shutter up again. It's all coming back to me, guys. Come on up. Back for down dog. Oh, man. Heels finally starting to cooperate. Jump through to seated. Legs crossed. If you are able to, um, Focus pose, I believe it's called, where you can put your feet into your hip, hip creases. You can definitely do that on both legs for that compression there. But uh, cross legged fold is just fine. Extending your arms out with your thumb to index finger. Sit tall, pulling your spine out, it's all relaxed, realigning your body. Four, and five. We're going to do an active version of this after this chaturanga. Again, these can be a lot for some people. You can always hang out in child's pose and continue to build on that flexion in your spine and open up your hips. We're going to sit in a cross leg position. Lotus pose, lotus pose. Sorry guys. Um, and then we're going to actively, the full posture is being able to uh, engage your lower abs to bring your legs off the ground. But we're going to actively just kind of push the ground away as we pull our shoulder blades back. Encouraging that neutral spine, actively lengthening our spine. That's four and five. So we'll try to round up and come into Shavasana. Last pose of 
today's practice, guys. I want you to come back, kind of one vertebrae at a time. Depending on what you have planned for today, considering this is the morning still, I'd like to keep my palms up to pull in energy. If you're doing this practice at night, you might find it more beneficial to have your palms down, where you kind of protect your own energy and wind down for the night. And go ahead and let your legs kind of splay open. Breathing, sinking into the floor, letting the floor support you. Relaxing. And you can do this anywhere from three to five minutes, or as long as you want. Take a nap. It's Sunday, we're relaxing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. More breaths here, guys, with you. together it's really um, it's a really beautiful mantra and I would love to share that with you as well um, thank you so much for joining me today um, and have a have a great Sunday um, any questions or comments definitely leave them below if you guys know anyone that would love to go through a flow with me um, uh, probably on the weekends uh, Sunday next Sunday um, you know invite them to the group and the more the merrier otherwise tomorrow I will see you here Again, for a quick 30 minute workout, I um, tend to overthink my uh, programming, so I created a little bit of spice to help make it easier for me to come up with some challenging movements for you, but then also be able to break them down in the time allotted. So it'll be a 30 minute workout. I'll be coming on live, not sure what time, but you can always pop in the group and watch it so that it fits your schedule. Okay guys, again, it's great seeing all of you and have a good weekend. Bye!